Right, we're getting to the mucky part of the restoration process. The base has been in this vinegar bath now for about 24 hours. And uh, I'm going to give it its first scrub. Um, yeah, there's, there is there is a little bit of uh, obvious uh, uh, rust removal going on already. But we're going to give it a scrub now in, in the vinegar. And um, it will uh, n no doubt, I hope, come out vastly improved. So... This is the first time I've done this. Uh, I will do this and then leave it in soak for another probably a day. Oh, that's good. Some of the paint's coming off as well. There's not much paint left on the top of this, to be totally honest with you. Um, it's, a, it's obviously all came off a long time ago. Right. Let's just do the, do the sides. Yeah, and I'm actually using a uh, um, a brass wire brush to do this, uh, which is uh, more than more than vicious enough to uh, to get the uh, to get the rust off that uh, that the vinegar has already worked its way into. And that's the. Uh, now we just do the. Uh, inside this was quite badly corroded as you saw when I took this apart so this is going to take um, you know it'll take a couple of days to uh, for the vinegar to do most of its, its work and then we'll finish it off using the brass wire wheel and that will take whatever remains off so let's uh, take that out. So yeah, I, I think you can see that's uh, you know, already already a considerable improvement. Um, there's still more that can come off, but this it's I mean the base was badly corroded, and uh, you know I mean particularly the corners, and obviously there still is some rust to come off in the corners, but but the vinegar has done a marvelous job already. Um, so we'll just pop that back in there and uh, let it get on with it. There we go, better say this is a, this is a mucky part of the job. <laughs> no doubt about it. Right. Well, still on with the messy part. Uh, I'm gonna use the old oven mate on the firebox, try and remove all of the remaining paint and the little uh, support for the cylinder and also the flywheel so uh, we'll get on and slap some of that on right that's all on there lovely stuff yeah we'll leave that for i don't know an hour probably and then we'll uh, come back and give it a good old brush and hopefully most of that paint will be gone right it's been about an hour let's, uh, let's see how we how we did Yeah, it's definitely coming off. Let's try this one. Firebox is always a problem with paint because obviously they get very hot. And uh, and it gets it right plastered, you know, really baked on. Yeah. It's not has been as effective on here as it was on the flywheel. Let's try this little beauty. Yes, he's eating into it on here. Yeah, I'll give it a I'll give it a brush with a a wire brush and then we'll wash it off and see 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 how we did. Well I've got the wire brush on him. Yeah, I didn't do, uh, didn't fare too badly at all. Firebox particularly was cleaned up quite nicely. I'll finish that off on the, on the wire brush. Get the last bits off the flywheel. Most of the red paint came off the flywheel. So again, that's, you know, wire brush work. Now, this was the one that resisted the, resisted the, the, the best. But um, never mind. That'll all clean up on the wire brush, ready for repainting. 
I've just given the base its last scrub with a wire brush. <coughs> it's actually been in the vinegar now for about three days. That wasn't intentional. I fully intended to take it out after about two days, but yesterday <coughs> I got involved with doing something else and I didn't have time to do this. So yeah, so we're gonna hog it out now and then we'll give it a wash off, but uh, it looks pretty good from what I can tell. Let's uh, drain all the, yeah. Now that's pretty amazing, really. I mean, the top wasn't that rusty, but the bottom, the underside really was bad, particularly in the corners. And the vinegar's pretty much got rid of, I'd say probably 95% of it. And it's also taken off a lot of the paint. So we'll wash this off now, and then we'll give it a going over on, on the wire wheel, along with the other parts that we used the oven mate on. Um, and these bits will then be ready for uh, etch priming and repainting. Pretty damn good. Well, I'll keep on with this and do the other parts and I'll bring it back when I'm done. Well, all that cleaned up really nicely. The uh, got a good finish on the old uh, on the old base plate there, and um, I did. It did occur to me that there might be a question as to why do I bother with the vinegar when I could just go straight at it with a wire wheel. Well, there's two reasons. First off, yes, you could go straight at it at the wire wheel, and it would probably be fine on cleaning up the flywheel and these parts. But the as you can see, the the um, the base plate is quite heavily pitted and the problem is that whilst the wire wheel will get most of it off and and it and it will do it's pretty damn good but it's bloody hard work if you just attack it straight off the wire wheel won't get into the deep pitting uh, it's just not good enough for that but the vinegar will so the vinegar is really good when you've got deeply pitted rust um and not only that even if you haven't like i said the vinegar does a damn good job of removing most of it so that when you use the wire wheel it's it's easy it just you know you just waft it over these and these come up like 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 that you know absolutely brilliant so so they're already uh, these parts already for repainting i also had to go out cleaning up the um, crank support which uh, again just wire wheel work and that was that was dead easy that's not painted but these bits are and that needs to be masked off but I did also notice another problem when I was just looking at the parts, which it's not difficult, it's not a, not a, not a serious problem, but if you look carefully at the, uh, I don't know why you can see that, at the crank end, it's oval, it's worn badly. So I'm gonna have to make a new one of those. These bits screw on to the crank, so I can unscrew that, and it's simply a matter of Again, again, a bit of mild steel rod that's the right size and, and drill and ream it out for the crank pin size. But at least then we will have a round hole rather than the oval hole we've got in there at the moment. Yeah, so that's where we are at the moment. Next up is etch prime all this lot. If it ever stops raining, that is here in the UK. Um, and then obviously eventually uh, finish off with a, a coat of enamel. With the firebox you don't need to go to the pro the trouble of high temperature engine paint when you've got an electrically heated boiler there's no direct flame on the paint work so yes it gets hot but ordinary enamel paint is more than adequate to withstand that th those temperatures okay let's get on with it okay so here is where we are with the emco b43 i've managed to get the metal parts that we cleaned up etch primed but unfortunately the weather has taken a turn for the cold here in the UK uh, it's currently only about seven degrees C outside which is way too cold for painting so I've got to wait until I can get the final coat on those but we are getting there <coughs> I've cleaned up the crank support that cleaned up quite nicely I'm quite uh, quite pleased how that came out same with the uh, same with the engine block I've made a new uh, Conrod end uh, out of a piece of uh, <coughs> mild steel bar and that again has come out quite well quite pleased about that so unlike this one which of course as i said was is oval <laughs> so that's done i've still got a few bits and pieces to clean up in here and we've got to make a new a regulator screw and knob for it but uh, yeah that's all coming along 
quite nicely. Now I'll show you something else I found. Now, I was having a good look over the boiler just to see that it was okay. And um, I'm glad I did because I noticed that this lower sight glass elbow was completely cracked around its base. In fact, it was only held on with a fine sliver of metal. So what I did was I, I actually took it off completely because I wanted to be able to clean, clean the mating surfaces ready for resoldering, which is, which is what I did. So I wanted to pass on this little tip for, for anyone who actually <laughs> runs into this problem. Now it's, it's critical that the sight glass elbows are aligned properly because if they're misaligned, when you tighten the sight glass gland nuts up, you'll simply crack the, the glass tube. So this is a little tip and this is a, a dead easy to do. <clears throat> Get yourself a bit of bra, I've used brass, preferably soft metal, um, which is the same size as the sight glass. Use that to line up the two elbows and they're perfectly lined. I can turn this round, let's say I've resold this one already. And, and that will allow you to line these up perfectly. But you're saying, how are you gonna get the bit of brass out? Yeah, well, that's actually fairly easy. First thing I'm gonna do is place a piece of steel underneath it. This is just to protect the boiler. And then I have got a Dremel type tool with a very, very small cutting disc. And we're gonna make a couple of couple of cuts. I may actually have to hold this because it may rotate and spin, but um, we'll see how it goes. Let's just orientate this better so that I can actually, you still need to be able to see what I'm doing. only had to make one cut that was enough so there you go that's a, a very simple way of getting these two aligned if you have to resolder one of them um, and that's gone on there quite nicely so now we can get, get on with uh, cleaning the boiler up 